Guys, we did it. We broke 100,000 subscribers and I haven't forgot about you. I still got the names in here, so we're gonna do that giveaway soon. But today we got a great question and it comes from Michael. Coach John, love your videos. I have a 16 year old son who's pitching on his varsity baseball team. In between starts, he pitches in the bullpen and throws long toss. Any idea what kind of rest he should have in between? And also, do you believe in using ice or running in between starts? I've heard both from different people. What are your thoughts? Thanks for that question, Michael. That's a great question. And I'm guessing that your son's on a seven day routine, meaning he probably pitches on let's say a Friday, and then doesn't pitch again until that next Friday, or maybe does some midweek relief depending on how many pitches he threw in his start. That's what I'm guessing because that's what I was on when I was in high school. So what he needs to do is develop his seven-day recovery routine, and it's going to be different for everybody. I'm going to talk about uh, what I used to do as far as ice or not icing, and we're going to get into that in a little bit And because I went through different phases with that. But I also want to talk about and just kind of build out a sample seven day recovery routine that he can try and then manipulate and, and use and change to get the most out of how he feels after he pitches. So the first thing you asked was about rest. How much rest should he have? So I always like to look at pitchsmart.org when we're talking about rest and pitchers. So if you go to pitchsmart.org, uh, you're gonna get to their front page and you'll see pitching guidelines up top. You just click on that, you find your player's age. For you, it's gonna be 15 to 18. And then you can see here, it says, players can begin using breaking pitches and developing consistent fastball and changeup. Do not seed 100 combined innings pitched in any 12-month period. Take at least four months off from competitive pitching every year, including at least two to three continuous months off from all overhead throwing. Make sure to properly warm up before pitching. I hope you guys know that one already. Set and follow pitch count limits and required rest periods. And they're gonna give some samples down below here, so that's what they're talking about. Avoid playing for multiple teams at the same time. Avoid playing catcher while not pitching. Players should not pitch in multiple games on the same day. Make sure to follow guidelines across leagues, tournaments, and showcases. Monitor for other signs of fatigue. That's an important one. And we're gonna talk a lot about feel here as this video goes on. A pitcher remaining in the game but moving to a different position can return as a pitcher anytime in the remainder of the game but only once per game. No pitcher shall appear in a game as a pitcher for three consecutive days regardless of pitch counts. Now right down below, this is really what I wanted to get to here is the rest, the required rest for the amount of pitches that the player throws. And you can see here for the 15 to 16 age group, you should not throw any more than 95 pitches ever in a given day. Then you'll see the days above these numbers, zero days, one days, two days, three days, four days. That's the required rest that you need if you throw the amount of pitches below it. So if you throw one to 30 pitches, you're gonna need zero days off, which means you can pitch the very next day. If you throw 31 to 45 pitches, you're gonna need one day off, 46 to 60, two days off, 61 to 75, three days off, and 76 to 95, because 95 is the limit, then you're gonna need four days off. And I'm guessing if he's doing well, right, if he's a starting pitcher and he's doing well, he's probably gonna be in that 76 to 95 pitch count limit. So we're gonna assume that he needs at least four days off. So that midweek start, or, or excuse me, that midweek relief that you do, if he's pitching on Friday, he's not gonna be able to do that until Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, that's four days off. So Wednesday will be the next time he could do like a midweek relief if he gets into that 76 to 95 pitch count limit, okay? Let's assume that he doesn't have to do that, that the high school coach doesn't uh, have him do midweek relief, okay? Because uh, I hope they don't if, if they're getting to that pitch count. It's, it's really not worth it. Maybe if it's a close game and he's had his four days, then you might think about it. Um, but let's just assume for building out this seven day routine that he doesn't have to. He only pitches on Friday and then Friday again. So let's talk about right after the start, okay? Now, here's where we're gonna talk about icing versus not icing because you see a lot of guys, even in the major leagues today, who first thing they do is go throw some ice on their arm, okay? And I've done this in my career. I've done uh, many months at a time where I would ice every time after I threw. And then I went through phases where I didn't ice at all. And what I came to the conclusion of and what I finished my career with was not icing. And I'm gonna tell you why. The way I look at it is 
we ice because we're trying to get the inflammation out of the arm. That's the reason we ice. And that works. The ice does help with the inflammation. But what is causing that inflammation? It's our body's natural response to try to fix what's going on there. We just threw 76 to 95 pitches. Of course, our arm's gonna be inflamed because our body is sending all this new blood there to repair all the stuff that we damaged. We just you know, put our, our muscles to use throwing those balls and our body's gonna try to recover that as, as quick as possible. So that inflammation is our body's natural response to recovery. So why do we wanna ice? If we're gonna take away that inflammation, we're taking away the recovery time. And that's what I actually felt, okay? So when any time that I used to ice, and again, I went through many phases where I iced it nice, iced it nice, iced it nice for many years. And I've always liked not icing better because after icing, I always felt more sore the next day, almost like I didn't recover as fast as I would have if I didn't ice, which makes sense now thinking about it and as I've learned along the years, that's because I took the inflammation away, but the inflammation helps the recovery process. So it's kind of like you're fixing one issue, which is not really an issue. You, you, we're not really addressing the underlying issue, which is, is we're, you know, that inflammation is helping us. So, you know, Advil the same way. I used to pop the Advil all the time after pitching, but I stopped that as well because that's basically trying to do the same thing. We're trying to stop the inflammation, but the inflammation can be a good thing to help us re recover faster. With all that being said, uh, there's a few good videos that I found with uh, studies attached to them here on YouTube. So I'll link uh, a couple of them if I can find them down in the description below so you can hear more about them. Because again, this is just my opinion, um, but there have been some studies that I, I will link to some videos that link to those studies that you can go watch if you wanna watch that. But more importantly is you should try to figure it out for yourself right? and your son and the few pictures who I'm speaking to should try to figure it out for yourself. Do you like icing? If you like icing and you feel good and you feel like it's working, then go for it. Obviously, many major league pitchers still do it. If you don't like it and you feel better not icing, guess what? Don't do it. You don't have to. Nobody's making you do it, okay? You might have a coach that says, go ice your arm or whatever, but if you feel better not icing, you don't have to. All right, so now that we got right after our pitching start out of the way, you know, to ice or not to ice, what are you gonna do after that? I suggest 15 to 20 minutes either jogging or on the elliptical. And I say on the elliptical because we want to get those arms going. So if you're jogging, make sure you're getting those arms going too because we really want to get the blood flow uh, in, those, in those arms and in that body, okay? So 15, 15 to 20 minutes on the elliptical or a jog. And then also I like to go through a flush routine with some dumbbells, just real light dumbbells, three pound dumbbells. And what I would do is a superset of about eight exercises. And I would just go through these exercises uh, real quick, not quick in the sense of I'm, I'm moving fast, but quick in the sense of that I'm not taking a break in between each set. So I would do eight sets of eight to 10 exercises and I would just go through there and get the blood flowing. I would do one or two sets of those, sometimes three sets, not often depending on how I felt, but that would really get the blood flowing in the arms. So that would be it for day zero for me. Um, but the next day, day one in the recovery process or how we would count them out in the, in the recovery routine, um, I like to do another 15 to 20 minute run or elliptical. And then instead of doing the light dumbbells, I would do bands. So I would go through a band routine. You know, I use the Jaeger bands. Um, they go around your wrist here um, and you can really get some good work in with them on that first day of rest. Then on that first day of rest for throwing, I just like to play light catch. And you're gonna have to feel this out and that's where feel comes into play for you pitchers. You really just gotta feel how your body is. Some days you're gonna be a lot more sore than others, okay? So maybe you're feeling good, you play catch, and you go, mm, okay, I can maybe go out to 60 feet or so, maybe 90 feet and just playing light catch, but feel it out. Some days you're gonna get that ball and go to throw it and you're gonna go, oh God, man, what happened last night? Right, it's gonna be different every time, okay? Because there's so many things that go into play as far as how you're gonna feel the next day. Eating actually plays a role in that. Uh, uh, of course, whether you're taking Advil or ice or not, um, is gonna play a difference in how you feel the next day. Whether you're doing your running and stuff the night of. So a lot of things come into play when it comes to how you feel the next day. So you're just gonna have to feel that out when you get there, okay? But light catch is usually a good way to go with that. Uh, another thing that I like to do on the, the first day of recovery, the next day after pitching, is massage, okay, or e stim. So getting real warmed up. We used to have, the trainers used to have heat pads, so we put a heat pad on for 15, 20 minutes. Then we uh, go through a stretching routine, 
Then we get a good massage in there and finish up with some um, E-Stim. So that was always a great routine for me. I always felt great with that. I love the massage. Um, in fact, I had one trainer that we used to milk our arms. So we would hang our arm up, like we'll hold on to something up top, and then he would pull all the blood back down into the bottom. So he's massaging all that blood back into our body. So, you know, those, those were always some good things that I like to do that first day after recovery. It felt like it helped speed up the recovery process, and I felt much, much better earlier in the week. Now, day two of rest, we're gonna do like a light long toss, depending on how you feel. Again, this is all in accordance to how you feel. So it's not set in stone. Again, this is just a sample seven day routine. So all of you guys out there watching this, I want you to figure out your own. You can write it out right now, but guess what? It's gonna change over time and it's probably gonna change week to week, okay? So this is just a sample. So what I used to like to do was just play some light long toss. And this, again, that was most of the time. Sometimes it was different but on that second day, light long toss. Now, I'm not really talking about workouts either, okay? And I'm not gonna talk about workouts uh, during this video, but if you're gonna start your workouts, this day would probably be a good day to jump back on it, okay? You've had your pitching day, you probably uh, took off that day, you might have gone light the day after, but this, this second day, you could probably get back in there if you're feeling good and start banging them weights. So for day three, we want to do a little more extended long toss, whether it's a little bit further or just a little more aggressive. You got a little more intent behind your throws. Um, again, depending on feel still. So if you're still super, super sore, keep it lighter, okay? But if you're starting to feel a little bit better and you get out there and you play catch and you get warmed up and you're feeling real good, you can let it go a little bit today, okay? Start to stretch it out, start to get a little more oomph behind those throws, okay? And again, you just gotta play it by feel. Day four is a light pen day or can be a light pen day. Again, this is not uh, a must. Some guys like to do it. In fact, some guys like to have two pen days during the week in between their starts. So it's going to depend on uh, how you feel and what you like doing. Okay. Some guys like to get on the mound just to get the feel of the mound and the slope so that they don't lose their command or control or accuracy when they're pitching. Other guys don't like to get on the mound as much because they feel like it takes more out of their arm. So they're only gonna do once a week. Again, this is personal preference. You're gonna to have to find out what works for you. But you can get on the mound. I know PitchSmart said that you don't wanna pitch uh, four days after, but you can get on the mound. It's just not in games, in competitive pitches. Again, this is a light pen. We're up on the mound, we're throwing pitches, but we're not doing a lot of pitches and we're not going at full speed. Day five, we're gonna do long toss. Again, depending on how you feel, you can stretch it out some more, get a good one. Um, now, but now, you start the process of, you may be feeling really, really, really good, but you also have to keep in mind as we're getting closer now to your next start. So even though you're feeling really amazing, if you do a super hard long toss workout, you may be now putting yourself back into that sore mode, right? So you have to be really smart during this time of week because you're gonna start to feel really good, but you don't wanna overdo it. So you gotta kinda find that line, that good line where you get some good work in, but you don't overdo it to where you're too sore for your next start. Day six, this is the day before your start now, and you could do a light pen again, you could do a light long toss. If you're feeling good, you could amp it up a little bit, but you always have to keep in mind now that you are starting tomorrow. So tomorrow is the most important thing. Day six really doesn't matter as far as trying to get the workload in. It's about how, what are you gonna do today so you can feel your best tomorrow. That's what day six is about. Of course, during all of these days, you wanna make sure you're warming up real good, you know, doing your bands, getting loose, stretching, um, all of the basic stuff that you guys know that you have to do, okay? It's not just grabbing a ball and going out there chucking long toss. Of course, there's a lot more to it that you need to do. Again, we didn't really talk about workouts during the seven day uh, routine, but you can start your workouts and kind of fill them in in between. As you get closer to your start, just remember that you kind of want to not do too much so that you're taking away from the energy in your start. Actually, in my pitching program, Pitching 365.2, I've got a seven-day recovery routine, a five-day recovery routine, and a recovery routine for relief pitcher. So if you're interested in that, I know we're talking about the seven day recovery routine, but if you're interested in that, uh, you can check it out. I'll leave a link down below. It's actually on sale right now. So check it out. I hope you guys like this video. I hope I answered all your questions. I hope I talked about everything I wanted to. I think I did. Um, again, we're going to still do the 100,000 subscriber giveaway here soon. I just got to get around to it. I promise. We're at like 110,000 subscribers already. It's going fast, growing fast in the summer. I love it. Um, thank you so much, guys, for watching. If you have any questions like this, just shoot them to me. Send them to my email, baseball at gmail.com. 
um, you know, I could put your video here on YouTube, answer it for you in depth like this one. And then uh, do we want to do like maybe a 250,000 subscriber giveaway contest or maybe a maybe a 500,000 subscriber giveaway contest where we do something big? I don't know. Let me know what you want to win, what I should give away or something like this. In fact, I just gave away, I got to get this in the mail. I just gave away a brand new Rawlings Pro Preferred Glove. I got to ship this thing out as a matter of fact right now to the winner. Um, and of course, we got the 100,000 subscriber giveaway where somebody in here is going to win one of anything on my website at yougoprobaseball.com, which is a lot of cool stuff. If you haven't checked it out, go over there and check it out right now. So one lucky winner is going to win whatever they want. I'm going to ship it to them for free. Uh, but that contest is already done. There's no more new names going in there. Let me know what you want to win in this new competition and we'll get it rolling right now. So when we get to 500,000 or a million or whatever we're going to do, I got something really good for you guys. But let me know what you want down in the comments below. Let me know if you have any pitching questions, hitting questions, baseball questions in general. Don't forget to subscribe. Just click the logo and then go watch some of these videos that are popping up on the screen right now. Thank you so much, guys. I'll talk to you in the next video.